Corey, could you touch on how Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook has affected dating? Well, just the question, I can tell it's that's something that's discussed a lot in the red pill community is they make a big deal out of it. Their attitude is, oh, girls get all this attention and validation from strange men on Instagram. And then you got the only, you know, a lot of the these guys that have these podcasts, they bring exclusively only fans, girls, sex workers, girls that are like on seeking arrangement or, or whatever, girls that have, you know, big followings that are just, they're posting thirst traps. And then they're trying to present this image because it's very Jerry Springer-ish, mm-hmm. ish, I should say, of, you know, bringing these people on that they're, they try to say this is modern women, but just strictly focusing on a, a small group of women that are on OnlyFans or that are sex workers or strippers. Yeah. They're all tatted up and, you know, they come from, they're all, all of them come from broken homes. They're, these are not girls that are, you know, religious and go to church and have had three boyfriends in their life. They're, because no regular woman is going to go on one of these podcasts and, and let, you know, some of these guys that are quite frankly douchebags. Right. Just sit there and berate them. But they're so the insinuation is, oh, because Instagram, because of these different social media apps and all the attention that men get that therefore all women are messed up and they will just leave you at the drop of the hat as soon as they get mad or they get upset. And the reality is, is that I say this all the time. It's like if you act like a bitch, women are going to treat you like a bitch. Mm-hmm. And the guys that are complaining about this, because you know their solution is that you should d- only date women that have a low body count or that are virgins or have only been with one or two guys. Yeah. And the reality is, you marry. I went to a, a Catholic high school, and some of the girls didn't sleep around a lot. But ten years later, they were with maybe two boyfriends. The guy was that they married to act like a bitch. What happens? You could, and well, I, mean, I know in one case, and our, our high school reunion you had this two married couples, and um, uh, one of the guys and married another girl that was in our class, and so he was cheating on his wife with another girl in my class, and she was married to some guy that she met in college. Oh no! And she had a hand only had a handful of boyfriends in high school, so according to the definition. Then um, she had a low body count, only had a handful of boyfriends, married her high, you know, college sweetheart or whatever, mm-hmm. and obviously wasn't happy because the guy she married, was he was kind of a bitch. He was kind of a beta male. He didn't date and court her properly. And by that po- point, it was like the 10-year reunion. I think they'd been together like six, eight years, whatever it was. And so she starts screwing, one, you know, cheating on her husband with another guy from my class. He's cheating on his wife. Oh, yeah. And then it all got found out and... Uh, that day? Well, during the whole reunion process. Oh, no. Because they were hooking up for a while while they were planning our... I think it was our 10 or 15 year reunion. I can't remember. Yeah. And um, so the the guy, his wife stayed with him. They never went to any other reunions after that. Yeah. And the girl, when her husband found out that she was cheating with one, you know, one of the other guys that she was doing the reunion with, it's like... He's like, fuck you. He left her. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he had the balls to say, I'm not staying married to you. Right. But you would look at that and go, hey, you know, she supposedly came from a good family. Her parents were, and they were Catholic. She's supposed to be religious. Well, what happens? She's a fucking whore. It's, you know, character is destiny. But just because you marry a virgin or a girl with a low bo- body count, it, if you act like a bitch and you don't date and court your girl properly, she doesn't feel heard and understood eventually she is going to leave you. She's going to leave you. It's just really a matter of how she leaves you. Women that have low character, they'll fuck your best friend. They'll fuck your business partner. They'll get knocked up by one of your friends, and you'll end up raising you know, your kids. It's actually some other dude's kids. Those things happen all the time, and they've always happened. This is not, not new stuff. We're more aware of it, but I just don't agree with the premise that just because social media that that's why women aren't going to be loyal and faithful so you you have to evaluate all human beings based on their actions and how they show up right as you're trying to character's destiny you know just simple things like does she keep her word is she honest yeah. or is she constantly lying about little things because if she lies about little things she's probably lying about the big things and so you got to look at what people do 
not what they say in order to judge them. Or what they look like. I feel like a lot of people judge the book by its cover. Is that how you say it? Yep, don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, and there might be girls who, okay, flaunt their body or their appearance sexually or whatever, like sexual sex appeal, but then you get to know this person and they're completely humble or genuine, they're nice. Because I've had people say that before. They Like, there's a guy that I know who's in a relationship with a girl who's Instagram model or she's always posting in bikinis and stuff like that. And at first, he judged her and thought she was a know-it-all or a bougie girl that only wants bougie dates, expensive dates, or has hundreds of guys all over her. But then he got to know her and I got to know her too. And she's actually really sweet, really genuine, low body count, like you said, doesn't entertain the hundreds of DMs. And it's like, you would never know until you give that person a chance to get to know them personally, you know? Yeah. Success leaves clues as Tony Robbins and Jim Rohn used to say. And so you have to look at how your girl is going to react. They're, Women are loyal and faithful. As soon as a dude slides into the DMs, they're just not even going to respond. Or if a guy hits on her, mm-hmm. she's going to say, I'm married. I, I have a boyfriend. That's not appropriate. Right. You know, to keep hitting on me. But there are other girls that they'll give out their phone number to the guy. Oh, mm-hmm. he's just a friend. Yeah. And basically giving the dude the green light to hit on her. Mm-hmm. And so that when you're dating, that's part of the vetting process. You're trying to determine whether or not you're with somebody of good character. You know, it's... I, I remember I had a, a girl I know that I went to high school with. I love her to death. We all love her to death. She was hot in high school. And I remember a, a, one of my friends went out on a date with her, hooked up with her, and he was thinking, I'm going to date her. And um, another friend of his um, was telling a, about a story. So one of my other friends was basically getting a blowjob from this girl Why a, a second friend of mine was doing her doggy style. This was in high school. What? That was in high school. Catholic high school. These oh things were, were going God. on, you know? And, and, um, and so this happened like a week after my buddy went out on like a first date with her. And he's thinking, I'm going to date her. And so my friend who was um, doing her doggy style, his brother was the one pulled him aside and said, hey, this is what happened the week after or the week before you guys went on a date or hooked up. It's like... You know, don't oh, judge a book. Wow. She seemed all innocent, but, you know, girls yeah. are freaks, guys are freaks, and that kind of shit was going on in, in my Catholic high school. And so, like, I see these dudes, especially the red pill guys, just freaking out over the fact that women like to have sex and that some women lie, some women cheat, and acting like they've made a new discovery on life, hypergamy or, you know, hypergamy doesn't care. This is modern women. It's like women have always been like this. It's just we're more aware of it now, especially with podcasts, because this kind of stuff, the only time you get exposure to it in the past, you know, would have been like Jerry Springer or Morton Downey Jr. or a Howard Stern or, you know, a shock jock type of person. This stuff was always going on, but we're now more aware of it because you've got so many different social media channels where you can see these kinds of things. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like, again, I went to school with people that had every advantage. They had every... Um, moral code imposed upon them by their families, the priests, the nuns that helped raise us. And on the weekends, uh, when they went to college, it's like they were rocking out with their, you know, rocking out with their cocks out. They were getting their freaks on, man. And just because somebody has a low body count or they're a virgin or they come from a good family doesn't mean that this is somebody you you want to marry and have a family with. It's like you have to look in into their background. And my this one, this particular friend of mine, the girl he ended up married had I know a handful of boyfriends before she married him. And her parents were pretty conservative, and they didn't tolerate any fuckery or any bullshit, and they were pretty strict. Yeah. And his wife has always been loyal, as far as we know, has always been loyal and faithful to him, and they have a really great marriage and and, and great relationship even though he hooked up with a lot of girls in high school and he was kind of a bad boy, he, he made a good choice. He chose a good woman based on her character. And the one thing he always, you know, said was that she was always nice to me. Hmm. That's why I married her. She was always nice to me. Yeah. That's who you want. A girl that's nice to you. Girls that are assholes to you, if you stay with them, and they're like, oh, I can just always be an asshole. Right. And then they treat you that way. Whatever you tolerate, you invite more of. Yeah. 
And so I understand why the guy says what he says. It's you have to evaluate people case by case. You can't mm-hmm. just watch one of these dunces because the guys that are crying the most about how much sex women are having are typically the guys that aren't really having any sex. And they're getting they're upset just about mad. <laughs> they're just mad because yeah. it's I mean, the reality is that a pretty girl can go out anywhere, especially if there's lots of dudes. And it's like I know you have this experience and it's like, you know, you're bobbing and weaving. It's just constantly dudes throwing their dicks at girls. You don't even have to be that media. pretty either. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're constantly getting approached. And for the average guy that never has any kind of experience with that, you know, the girls they date or girls that are interested are far and few between, it's irritating. They, they don't like it because they don't like that this pretty girl that they would like to date is just baby basically able to go out and you know, she could have sex with 15, 20 different dudes in a weekend if she wanted to, because there's so many guys that want to have sex with her. And yeah. they're bothered by that. And they're bothered by the fact that, uh, you know, a woman in a matter of months can stack dozens of bodies. And some of them do. Not all of them, but some of them do. Mm-hmm. And again, you have to evaluate people based on their character. Women who love and value themselves and their sexuality and they're selective, they're not going to give it up to just anybody. And other girls are more free-spirited. It's like, hey, you know, they like men. They like to have a good time, and they're pretty, and they take advantage of opportunities. But when a guy comes along that they really like, it's they'll settle down and be loyal because they're a loyal person. Mm-hmm. His character is destiny. And, and, you know, the reality, when you look at, like, the 1960s and, like, when the birth control pill came on the market, it's like you could have pretty much un, unprotected sex and not really worry about, a pregnancy, obviously, other than you got to worry about diseases and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, the, my parents grew up in the free love era where girls would just, you know, thumb, they, I'm going to go to California and they would have no problem hopping in a car with a strange dude and sucking his dick halfway down the road or fucking him all the way to California. And then, hey, nice meeting you. And hey, it's free love. You know, that. Th- <laughs> this is not a new thing that yeah. a pretty girl can easily get laid and often does get laid but the question is is does she keep her word is she going to be loyal is she family oriented is she nice to you does she communicate well or is she messed up because typically especially like what you see in these red pill guys as shows is like they have all the girls that you'd hook up with and have fun like i had a friend that you he just liked dating strippers and so oftentimes on friday nights he'd be like let's go to the dollhouse you know or or if we were in tampa let's go to mons venus and he was from another country and he had an accent and he just, he liked dating strippers and he liked hooking up with strippers because they were kinky and they were into the weird things that he was into. And, you know, at, he didn't marry a stripper. He had several of his girlfriends and they were cool. Mm-hmm. I dated some of their friends. And, but at the end of the day, he, he ended up settling down and marrying a nice family oriented girl. Oh, now gosh. They have a couple kids. And he screwed around a lot on her in the beginning, cheated on her, did all kinds of the irony, really bad things. But got broke up, got back together three or four times, with the help of yours truly, and they lived happily ever after. Did they though? They're pretty happy she behind the, the show. scenes. He's not cheating on her, no fucking around. As soon as they had kids, he was like, Psh. Mm. "He's been loyal." He would tell me. Okay, good, because karma. This. But he was a bad boy. He was a bad boy. Back when they were, before they had children. 